that I'm fine. We both know I'm lying. I am a child. My naivety is blinding, and I'm hoping a point of hope you won't see me cry or hear me tell myself I'm useless. Push me away. Don't stay another minute, cause I've lost the game. But at no point was I winning. Just don't call me a reply to anything I say. Cause we both know I'm useless. We'll be till I'm dead. I'm alone, but no one else is hurting. It's the end of the show for me. While I hide behind the curtain, sayonara, au revoir, au revoir. We're LMS UK and we are here with the fantastic George Bone. George, we've just heard three of your songs, which are incredible. Thank you so much. But what I want to talk to you first about is festival season. Yep. It's coming up. Yep. You're booked left, right and centre across the country. Yeah, I am. How excited are you? Um, I mean, I literally just played my first festival of the year last Saturday. It was at um, Northern Kin at the VIP mm -hmm. tent that they had there and a company that I work closely with, Canary Records, they programmed the um, uh, all of the, the weekend and it was just a really fun experience. And sure, it may have been muddy as anything, Thing. But like, um, it was really, really nice getting to that festival swing of things, and hopefully there'll be many more to come by by the end of September when it's, the season usually finishes. It's an always exciting place, isn't it, for for a musician, but also for a music lover going to festivals and kind of experiencing it, new music, new oh God, people. Yeah. Incredible. You get to find out so many like new things, and it, especially for the artists, it's just a really nice opportunity to get to know other collaborators and to network with them as well. And, and also playing for a new crowd, people oh, yeah. that haven't come to you or not seen you before, you know. Yeah, Fantastic. whether they're within your age demographic or not, it's still nice to be like, hey, this is this is my stuff. What do you, what do you think? Hundred <laughs> percent. So talk to me a little bit about your recording process. Yeah. So you think of a song, yeah. is it kind of straight onto notes and lyrics first, or would you go to the piano first? Let's talk about, for example, Valencia, yeah, who yeah. you play today. How does that recording process happen for you? Yeah, okay. So I'll tell you, to give you context about the song, it's probably required to have that creative process. So one of my friends from, um, one of my friends from home, Josh, he was one of the only British people um, to get a scholarship over to Berklee College of Music in Boston. Mm -hmm. But for his three-year degree over there, they have to do a semester abroad in the European campus in Valencia. Mm -hmm. And uh, last September, he said to me, mate, flight's a £20 return from uh, Stansted do you want to go? And I said, absolutely, sure. <laughs> um, like, the, yeah, they've got just, it's just a beautiful city as well. It's one off the bucket list. Um, and uh, he took me up to his place and he was like, look, we're going to sneak you into a Berkeley house party. And I was like, great. It was like, where, why? He's like, why? It's like, because we've got a party up on the roof and um, 
uh, you wear black if you're in a relationship and white if you're single. I know you're single. I was like, oh, firstly. <laughs> it's a term in white. <laughs> thanks. Um, but also, yeah, like it was just like really nice being up there about like 11, 11 o'clock midnight and seeing all the lights over the city. And you sort of think, so sort of, like, God, I wish I had someone to sort of spend this time with. Like I did a lot of traveling last year, but you just anyone is thinking like, you don't necessarily want to do it alone. You want mm. to share that experience with someone. Um, and that's where the sort of idea of the song came through. And I sort of came up with the chorus especially um, the second day that I was in Valencia just sort of like in my hostel playing around with a few chords on my on my logic working in house um, and wrote the chorus quite quickly and then got um, uh, Rhea Hanley um, mm-hmm. who's up in Leaper at the moment but I've just found out she she lives in Portsmouth mm-hmm. which is quite fun um, I got her to help me finish writing the, the verses and the pre-chorus from there and uh, we finished the song in February. Um, I've got a producer for it, and hopefully it should be released by end of October, early November. Fantastic. Yeah. That's really, really good to know. In terms of kind of, obviously, LMS UK help you with your social media yeah, yeah. and your brand, something you've been doing before you were with us yeah. were the little portrait photos. Yeah. Talk yeah. to me about them, because every time when I first kind of heard of you, George, it was looking through and seeing, you know, th- the portraits from shows or festivals yeah, yeah. Or, or abroad. So. T- Tell me through that. Yeah, so um, it actually came about through a few failed funding applications. Yeah. And so specifically NextGen, I'm going to call out the youth fund and NextGen here. <laughs> um, no, they're, they're great. Um, but yeah, so basically I did two applications for them beforehand. Both of them were rejected and I've just put in a third. And basically they said, hey, like we don't want you relying entirely on stuff like Canva and rotor videos and stuff like that to do your spot for canvas work and your mm-hmm. promotional work. Why don't you do it in the more DIY aesthetic? Your sound is more DIY anyway. You might as well go visually for a more DIY aesthetic. And I was like, you know what? Sure, why not? So, so the brand actually changed that point yeah, yeah. to suit the music. Yeah, so okay. literally my first sort of like little Polaroid uh, post was January 1st of this year. Mm. And I've got like a little collection of Polaroids from my Polaroid lab printer that I've sort of like just taken and sort of stuck on and especially when I get professional photos back from after gigs and stuff like that I just like to sort of do a thank you for coming but it's then just in this nice little branding of having this little Polaroid thing with like a sort of wood grain background and it's sort of been like a just a really refreshing thing instead of just constantly sort of having to think that your work is really really sort of nice and and sharp on places like like Canva and Rotor Video but it like a lot of artists at the moment you can just be sort of like hey this you're all working towards the limitations of budget you're all working towards the limitations of what you have why not brand yourself to those limitations and it just it sort of clicked really 100 percent. it's really interesting to know that kind of that you're actually being given that feedback of your music's like this maybe the brand needs to represent that yeah, as yeah. well which just which a bit more synergy involved in the yeah. project as a whole <laughs> <laughs> so to talk to me about kind of your influences and in music that kind of artists that you like and have shaped your music that you've written? Yeah, so I I grew up with a lot of country music in my, uh, my family. Um, my grandparents were sort of heavily evangelical and mm. uh, that sort of rubbed off on my parents as well who sort of lean quite conservative. So country, country music has always been in my family. Um, and so people that influenced me, especially from a... Uh, Early like early like tens, early teens, like people like Dan and Shay, uh, Carrie Underwood, um, Florida Georgia Line, sort of more commercial stadium country music. But it was when I sort of did my undergrad at Durham uh, that was sort of like, hey, there's an entirely new sort of like sonic world out there that doesn't involve four chords. Hey, mm. why don't you tap into that? Um, and so, sort of listening to to jazz musicians there that I sort of net was who I who I met and networked with, but also um, those who I went to see in gigs. So people like uh, Bruno Major, Eloise, um, who. Uh, who is on Bruno Major's record label. Uh, I've got tickets to both of them next year, or rather this year. Connor Albert, uh, a really good jazz pianist who works in Canada called Anomaly. Mm-hmm. Um, like Jacob Collier, uh, Tom Mish, when he released Geography. Um, There's quite a wide variety there. Yeah. When you think about from uh, Tom Mish to kind of jazz to country, yeah, it's yeah. a real... Oh God, like it's, it's a wide gamut, but if you don't have all of those influences, you can't sort of write or work to your best ability, really. Mm. You've got to sort of really know what's out there before you focus on what you want. And yeah. I'm glad I sort of knew what was out there before I focused <laughs> on what I wanted. I sort of repeated myself there, but yeah, like that's, 
my sort of main influences are sort of commercial jazz, uh, commercial jazz pop musicians and mm. producers as well. Connor Albert is a big one as well. He's just worked with um, Eloise on her first full length album and it's absolutely stunning. So yeah, like big influences coming from sort of south of the river London sort oh, of producers. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. So in terms of kind of, we've been really lucky here today because yeah, yeah. we've got to hear some new music from oh, you. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And this is unreleased. Yep. So talk to me about this new music that's coming out. What can people expect? If they've, they've seen a snippet today yep. of some of the songs, um, but what can they expect when that's released later this year? Yeah, so the plan is to uh, release sort of three of them in sort of single by single platform, um, spend the rest of 2023 sort of planning out single releases going through there, and then 2024, the start of it, announced sort of like a sort of an EP with maybe a few lead singles in there already. So I'll have about 10 or 11 songs out by then, and then getting an extra EP sort of 12, 13, and then putting it into a big amalgamation. Um, so the songs that I played today were going to be my debut releases. Mm -hmm. uh, I Really Hope You're Happy is going to be coming out around, fingers crossed, around late June, early July. Um, Therapy Session is going to be coming out late August, early September. And then uh, Valencia is going to come out October, early November. Fantastic. Well. So we've got all that to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> George, thank you so much for speaking to us today. Thank it's been so an much. absolute pleasure and the performances were fantastic. Bless you. Thank you so much, Josh. Very welcome. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, mate. No worries, really man. Really appreciate it. Happy? Yeah. Really.